Welcome to Torsta. I'm Pino Gree. As a time-traveling, super-dimensional magical girl, I've been many places. I've seen the shapeless colors that are outside and the glittering shores of Neptune. But the hardest place for me has always been a small planet near the star Sol. Let's have a look at some of the challenges I'm facing in my meat space life. Let's go! Today, I've come down to the seashore. Oh, you stupid, stupid boat. No, you're an airplane. You're a helicopter, even worse. No, you are an airplane, and you're a push plane. Actually, that push plane was a little interesting. It looked like an old Japanese uh, plane from World War II, an interceptor that was made in concept, but never put into production. I've come to the shoreline. I find this place interesting because two worlds meet here. There's the terrestrial and the aquatical. The difficult thing to understand about these two worlds is that there is no boundary. My main task today is mostly hygiene. In particular, I went and got my hair cut, which is two years overdue thanks to COVID. It's really important to have a professional appearance when going to work or being interviewed or things like that. Dirt really startles people, as does uncleanliness. It's also really uncomfortable to be in. But what is so startling about it? Well, why do I get dirty? When I'm deprived of my substance, this is the only thing that can happen to me. But what does that mean? Well, as a homeless person, there's nowhere that I can be. Everything around me is owned by somebody to be used for his pleasure. I can't go to the park because that's loitering and I'll be trespassed. If I go sit by the bus stop, the bus company sends the police to trespass me. On and on and on. Even if I go, or especially when I go to private places, a cafe or whatever, I have to get permission by paying for something. And if I could pay for things like that, then I should have a house. This doesn't just apply to spatial relationships, it applies to concepts. If that sounds odd to you, then think, what does the word intellectual property mean? Thank you, Boat. The idea is that there is some idea that I'm not allowed to think or to know, and especially not to use to act upon the substance around me. But it goes even more than just the concept of the thought or the thought itself, but even my ability to have thoughts is something owned by other people. In America, we see this very clearly when someone says, if you didn't want to work at Starbucks, you should have gotten a real degree. What is really meant behind this? Well, the ability to think or develop your brain or to exercise your soul only exists when owned by somebody else and he gives you permission. This is very real when living a homeless life. But for people who have homes, they build a fence around the garden. So the line of this divide that cuts people from the substance goes through their garden as well. But that cutting line hits the wall and then appears on the new side or the other side of the wall anew. He views it as something else, some other antagonism. Why? Because there's a boundary, but it's still the same line. Here's an expert on lines. What do you think, little spider? Oh yeah, where I live, we also have a spider season, and we're in it. I should come away from the bushes. I'm not just a time-traveling magical girl. If you remember, I am a super-dimensional time-traveling magical girl. From Uranus. So, when moving dimensions, perspective shifts, and it's not just one perspective and another that's important, but the gap between the shifts. And that would be that line that cuts through. But I don't know where it's going or why it's there. Maslow described the hierarchy of needs as a pyramid. He put matters of the creature near the bottom and the matters of the spirit near the top. This is wrong. It's not that these things are not important. The trouble is he has the wrong shape. Well-being is not a thing that stands, it's something that moves. These needs are like a wheel. A wheel rolls. 
If one side of the wheel is out of shape, the wheel goofs, it wobbles or it bounces, or maybe it sniffs cakes and fails to move altogether. We all need our wheel in the right shape, and rolling is where it needs to go. I'm lucky that I have a host family who is giving me a place where I can work out at straightening my wheel. What people share is not that they need the same things. It's not the needs they have. What they share is that they are having needs. In my work in public safety, I work a lot with other homeless people, and a lot of them are crazy. And this is the important thing for me to remember. There are non-standard ways a person can get his needs met. These are totally valid. Many people in the States seem to think, these stupid people should stop being lazy and get jobs, they're getting in our way, blah, 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 blah. Maybe they seem like a nuisance to you. Here is another way to look at it. I have a job and it's not meeting my needs. It is making my wheel all wrong. It is making the conditions for the needs I try to solve. This is not normal. You might realize you do really abnormal things to get your needs met too, which are very big nuisances to you. Very strange. So what is happening here? You are for just a moment seeing outside of yourself. When you meet a homeless person, another position that is alien to what you think is normal, this is all that is happening. That's how I see it as a homeland sturman in the United States. Speaking of aliens, even if your wheel is messed up or something is not happening right, everything that has to happen has already happened. Now is the moment to act. While you earthlings get to figuring that out, this is my advice. We do not share needs, Uranusians with humans and humans with each other. We share having needs. Our solidarity lies in that we are making our needs met. When you meet someone who is a big nuisance, crazy, something like that, remember as the sane one that you are in the place to guide the situation to the right way for the needs to be met. This is the solidarity of Uranusians with humans and this is the solidarity between humans and other humans. Well, that's what I think as a Uranusian. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video.